So you'll get a ding on your phone next time we live stream. So um, this dog is intact and that's consistent with um, the fact that she's got a mammary gland tumor. We are um, aware and it's been shown definitively that leaving them intact increases the risk of mammary gland tumor development. Um, there is a lot of discussion about the merits of early desexing and it is clear again that by desexing early we can prevent mammary gland tumors from developing but um, there are other tumors that are more frequent in dogs that are desexed early and that would include things like osteosarcoma, hemangiosarcoma, mast cell tumor, lymphoma. So generally the prevention of mammary gland tumors, I mean the prevention of cancer generally is not a justification for early desexing. Um, and then it's also controversial, can you retract on that for me please? as to whether desexing at the time of surgery improves survival. There was one study that suggested it did improve survival uh, after mammary gland tumor removal, but there have been a bunch of other studies that say that it doesn't make any difference. So we are not, and generally I would desex just because I think it's a good idea to prevent things like pyometra and stuff like that, but um, these owners specifically are, um, I want to be very conservative and also this is a 14 year old dog and so it makes it you know possibly less likely that we're going to make any difference by desexing. Um, the other question is how aggressive should we be when we remove this tumor and again this owner is very risk averse really just wants kind of a palliative surgery. Um, and so all we're doing is uh, removal of kind of a, a lumpectomy of the actual mammary gland tumor. We're certainly not going to remove the whole chain. The other thing is that they, the owner refused um, aspirating the mass or biopsying it beforehand to try to determine the grade, whether it was malignant or benign, um, before the procedure. So we just barely got chest x-rays over the line um, with this client, so they really did not want to do any more staging. Just gonna ligate that mammary vessel. Let me try to pull that skin back a little bit. See if I can identify the bleeding vessel a bit better. It's sitting right there. And this is a very mobile tumor, um, so we don't have to be terribly aggressive with the removal. Now there is another small mass at another gland that we're gonna remove at the same time. Maybe it's still streaming. Yeah. Okay, so sorry about that. We're back. So I have, I was just in the process of saying that I've ordered a new 
$2,000 streamer because this one is playing up. Um, so hopefully we'll get through this surgery and the new streamer should arrive in the next couple of days. Um, can I please get some bupivacaine? And I apologize if this um, stops streaming again, it may happen. Um, uh, three mil. So I'm just drawing up the bupivacaine here. Um, can you come over here and click on that? There'll be like a, a thought bubble. If you slide over on the bottom. Yep, and then, the, yep, that one right there. All right, so I'm injecting bupivacaine here. Can I please get some 3 PDS? So the new streamer should be here by next week, which means that I should. I'm sorry, do we have 3 on a taper, please? Thank you. So we're just waiting on our suture material. I can see a hello from Vegas and Malaysia and Townsville. Getting a bit light as well, I think. Thank you. So I'm using this 3.0 in kind of a deep sub-Q slash connective tissue layer. Of the problem is that I fried the battery in it and so there's no battery reserve which means that um, if it overwhelms the power supply even for a second it cuts out. So then when I get the new streamer I'll take the old one apart, try to get a new battery for it. And then that'll be a spare. Um, so the, the question about how wide I should be operating for mammary gland tumors is a very good one. Um, if I knew that this was benign, I could go very narrow. Because we don't know whether it's benign or not, in theory I should be going wider, but this owner 
you know, was very uh, concerned about incisional dehiscence and stuff like that, so she was very emphatic that she wanted a very marginal excision. Um, so we had our, our hands tied a little bit with how we normally would approach this. Um, there was a study that was done a long time ago in the 80s which showed that there was no difference in recurrence between a lumpectomy, a wide local excision, and a radical mastectomy. But there were like only three or four cases, as many as six cases in each group, and so I just don't think that the statistical power was there to show a difference in recurrence if there had been one. So, I mean, intuitively, as it is with any other tumor, generally, you know, wider is better, um, although that may be changing a little bit with some tumor types, uh, you know, and it's certainly the case in human medicine that wider is better with mammary gland tumors. So unless you're going to treat the tumor site with radiation therapy. So usually I would have gone probably a bit wider than this. And I apologize if the video is bad. Again, our streamer is playing up. I've ordered a brand new one that should be here next week. Run that quarterly for me, please. That one's gone. I've still got the other one to do. Um, and so there's a question that often when they, people do aspirates on mammary gland tumors, they come back inflammatory or non-diagnostic. And um, I think that that's been my experience as well. Um, so my tendency would probably be to get a, a biopsy. However, if you have a freely movable tumor like this and you think you can do a reasonably good job with your primary or index surgery, you might be okay just going in and, and taking out the mass. Um, there's a question about inflammatory carcinomas. Um, inflammatory carcinomas are just devastating. Um, I've only treated a few of them, thankfully, um, because the prognosis is just so grim. I think the median survival time is about two months with them, and radiation therapy and chemotherapy seem to be of limited benefit. Um, so. You know, if you can do a marginal or debulking or palliative surgery that's just going to, um, you know, be of some palliative value, that might be worthwhile. But I think that doing big wide local excision on those, number one, is very difficult. And number two, I don't think it provides a lot of survival benefit. They almost all have metastasized at the time of the initial diagnosis. So can you guys let me know if the video is working now or not? Yep. Yeah. Can you do me a favor, please, and unplug the... Huh. 
Yeah, the black cable on the far right hand side. Unplug it and then plug it back in. Does that come back on? Yeah. Okay, so uh, we've unplugged the video, hoping that that's going to come back on in a minute. Can you give me an update, please, on those that are watching, whether the video has come back on or not? Yeah, the video's back. Okay, great. Yeah. I think you any more Yes. Yes. Yeah, so go ahead and give her another point one. I've had this same streamer for about four years, and so it's finally, I think, giving up the ghost. Unplug the video and plug it back in. The black one. Yeah. And we've got that little bit of fat sticking out there. Let's see if I can poke that back in. What's that? Uh, let's use our 15 blade now to remove that other little mass. Submit that as well. So we've just removed the little lump on the other side. that suture out of the way, thank you. Cut both of them short. I'll just do a little crit the difficulties with the streaming if you haven't already done so. 
please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications so you'll get a ding on your phone the next time.